Good afternoon and welcome to EFL Championship Live. The race for promotion to the Premier League starts right here this weekend. Seven games to go and Leicester City have a title fight on their hands and it's a lot tighter than initially expected. Leicester were cruising their way through the season up until just a couple of weeks ago when they went three straight defeats in a row. Their worst form in the championship this season and have won just one of their last five. They head to Ashton Gate this afternoon to get our bumper good Friday action underway. All 12 games right, uh, right the way through this afternoon will be starting at Ashton Gate and we will round off at Vicarage Road as late table toppers leads who are currently at the top of the table at the moment, look to respond to whatever Leicester can do this afternoon. Leicester who can go back top of the table as long as they avoid defeat to Bristol City this afternoon. To today's teams, and we start with Liam Manning's side, the home side this afternoon with Max O'Leary in goal. A back five of George Tanner, Zach Viner, Robert Dickey, Hayden Roberts and Cameron Pring. In midfield is Jason Knight alongside captain Matty James. Scott Twine's back in the side alongside Anis Mametti and Tommy Conway who leads the line. On the bench for Bristol City is Bajic, Knight, Labelle, Sykes, Williams, King, McCrory, Mebude, Cornick and Naki Wells. For Leicester City who look to head top back top of the of the championship table. Start with Mathis, Mads Hermanson in goal. A back four of Hamza Chowdhury, Vite Fast, Yannick Vestigard and James Justin in defence. Harry Winks, Wilfred and Dede is back in the side for his first start in the championship this calendar year. And Kiernan Dewsbury Hall joins them in midfield with a leading line of Abdul Fatawu, Steffi Mavadidi and Jamie Vardy who has the captain's armband who leads the line. And also got the winning goal in the reverse fixture back in September. On the bench for Leicester is Stelarsic, Cody, Pereira, Albrighton, Marcel Mavidua, Priat, Ianacho, Daka and Akun. So firepower on the bench for Leicester. They're hoping they don't need it. But they want three points in a weekend that could completely destroy or make their title fight. Kick off from Ashton Gate is next. Good afternoon and welcome to the race for promotion. Two games for you this afternoon on Good Friday. We start here at Ashton Gate at the lunchtime fixture between Leicester and Bristol City. And then we round off the evening with Watford against Leeds at Vicarage Road at 8 o'clock tonight. In between are 10 other games where a lot of things can happen. Relegation battles and also those playoff places up for grabs. As we get underway... In our first of 12 championship games this afternoon on a bumper weekend. Easter weekend always delivers in the championship. Every season there's always drama over these two match weeks. Well, this double match week, shall we say, over one weekend. Bristol City, well, they're kind of not really chasing the top six anymore sitting in 14th a good distance away even if they win this afternoon they will still be 11 points off Norwich who of course are yet to play so a long way away 
from possible playoffs for Bristol City. And some would argue they probably do not deserve it, considering the fact that they've picked up four points against this the current top six this season as they pressure early on here. They've got bodies in the box. Conway on the spin. Blocked away. And two bodies got in the way. I think it was Scott Twine and Tommy Conway got in the way of each other initially for Bristol City. And then they have a shot from distance, which gets an early corner. It's from Jason Knight. Public of Ireland International. Gets a deflection and a good start to the, the game for Liam Manning's side. They need that crowd. They need that momentum to go in their favour if they want to cause an upset against Leicester on the back foot to start this game Enzo Moresca's team a tough away grind early corner trying to take it right footed whipped in away by Ndidi bounced all the way out and it will be recovered now by Cameron Pring left footed whips it into the box Mavadidi in the press to get it away from Twine and the shot falls to Manny James who has a shot but Instantly blocked by Leicester, who try and come away with the ball, but good early pressure from Bristol City. Leicester, at the moment, trying to play their way out from the back, all the way back to Hermanson. I think Leicester just need to string a few early passes together and kind of put an end to this early pressure from Bristol City as quick as possible. They've won a free kick. Hamza Chowdhury, followed by Manny James. Leicester looking to make it two wins from two against Bristol City this uh, this season, as they have with many teams this campaign. But their recent form, their worst of the season. Three defeats, one draw, one win in their last five championship games. And only win in their last five came against uh, Sunderland. It was only a 1-0 win at the Stadium of Light on that day at the start of March. Jamie Vardy scoring the winning goal in that one as well. But you take into account in there they had defeats to, to Leeds and Middlesbrough alongside QPR, two of which came at home. That will be the big disappointments for Leicester that they did lose two of those three games on their own turf. Something that's so crucial to promotion hopes and title hopes. That home form is so evidently crucial. As Bristol City tried to play a long ball down the line there and it went straight out of play. For a goal kick, a bit too much pace on that one. As it stands, if this does end a draw, of course, it's still very early doors, literally in the first couple of minutes. But anything other than defeat for Leicester, and they would go back top of the table, at least momentarily. Dewsbury Hall trying to spring a lovely ball across. He does so. It takes a deflection off Tanner. Falls to Mavadidi. First attack, Mavadidi with a cross. Just cleared away, not fully, though. Here's Fatawu with a shot. Takes a deflection, Vardy. The looping header straight into the hands. Of Max O'Leary. It could have went anywhere really. But Jimmy Vardy's looping header. Into the hands of the Bristol City goalkeeper. Just see it again. Fizz ball by Kieran Dewsbury Hall. It actually looked like George Tanner was going to get there. Blocked the ball. It bounced off him. Fell to Mavadidi. Went with the outside of his right boot. Whipped it across. It was headed away by Dickey. Bounced back down. And Fatou took the strike, ticket of flexion, and then Vardy's looping header. But here comes Mavadidi again. Gets a brick of the ball in the box. Fatou tried to cut it back, but just played it too short to Mavadidi. And Bristol City can fire it clear. Out of danger, but good response from Leicester to that early pressure from Bristol City. Finding the space in that left hand side. Here's Dewsbury Hall again. Playing in between the lines. Kieran Dewsbury Hall. So where he's at his best. Finds those pockets of space. Here's Hamza Chowdhury. Out wide to Fass. Back to Chowdhury. Bit of a mix up there. Got a bit of tanglement there. Hamza Chowdhury. But he got away with it. Fass. 
Ball over the top. Fatawu making the run, but blocked off that time by Pring. And then coming back in field is Scott Twine to recover the possession for Bristol City. Hello. Giving it straight back to Leicester. Silly giveaway, but one back nicely by Jason Knight. Off Drewsbury Hall. Another part of Bristol City's game that they need to kind of add to the, the armoury today is that physicality. Not be afraid to put one in on Leicester to make it a physical battle. Make it more difficult for the, the Foxes. Not make it as easy, not make it as kind of formal as you need to. It's all about in, kind of interrupting Leicester's rhythm and momentum in the game. It's one of the huge tasks that Bristol City need to overcome. And they haven't been in great form either. Lost all of all but one of their last six championship games. Only one win, and that was a one nil win at home against Swansea. Rob Dickey scoring the winning goal in that one. But five defeats around that West Brom, Ipswich, Cardiff, Sheffield Wednesday and QPR all beating. Bristol City, they actually did their only win against the current top six this season. Actually came before that run in mid-February mid when they beat Southampton by three goals to one here at Ashton Gate. Big result for Bristol City on that night, but terrible one run that ensued. Oh, Hermanson almost getting caught there. Good pressure from Conway, but fast received the ball and chipped it forward. A mistake at the back. Farty to pounce, but couldn't really grasp it, Jamie Vardy, and that was good recovery by Rob Dickey, who could have found himself in a lot of trouble there. Charging back towards his own goal and almost give give Jamie Vardy a one on one with the keeper, but Vardy just couldn't control it. Here's Viner. Dickey. Now out wide to Roberts. He's got Pring down the line. Shops in field. Gives it back to Jason Knight. Knight who goes from distance. Spotted the corner but only bobbled its way towards Mads Hermanson in the Leicester goal. And that came to absolutely nothing. But a bit of a switch up there from Bristol City. Not afraid to try different things. Different approaches. Chaudhry. At the moment, Hamza Chaudhry playing more of a... I mean, Leicester are quite wide, their defenders. The so-called back, the centre-back partnership and Vite Fass and Yannick Vestergaard are so split. It's a very, very kind of wide back three from Leicester, it seems. It's Justin, Vestergaard and Fass. And then Chaudhry's just dropping in every now and again. Good drop there from Harry Winks, but tried to chip it over the top, and Fatawu, who was going to receive the ball, was just a bit flat-footed there and didn't get the chase on the ball when he needed to. Just under 10 minutes gone at Ashton Gate. Nil-nil between Bristol City and Leicester. Both sides have shown promise in attacking areas so far, but nothing to show for it just yet. Matty James, nice ball out to the right hand side. Taken down by Tanner. Played in between the lines. Finds Mometi. Mometi looking for the cross. It's a high one. A bit too high for Pring, but brought down. In between the lines. Here's Conway. Stri strikes it straight at Mads Hermanson, but Bromison from Bristol City. And I'll start of that switch ball from Matty James out to the right hand side, and it kind of asked a question of Leicester that. Haven't really had to answer as of yet. Right to that right-hand side. And Mimeti broke down the right flank. He cut it back across. Maybe a bit too much pace on the, on the cross. Kind of took the spring out of the step of Bristol City. But they got the shot off in the end. And they finished off the move. 
That's the first shot on target of the afternoon. Here's Yannick Vestergaard for Leicester. Harry Winks. Just a bit wayward there. On not, a, not like Leicester. To give a ball away unanswered. And here come Bristol City. Conway made the run. Knight was making the run through. And Conway was his option. Couldn't find him. Again, not often that Leicester give the ball away. Completely an unforced error by Harry Winks. And... Leicester almost left themselves short-handed there. Here's Hamza Chaudhry. Very compact Bristol City in the midfield. They're not allowing those spaces. Leicester struggling to find their midfielders. Mattis, or Justin, sorry. James Justin. With a switch ball trying to find Fatawu and again that ball's just not quite accurate enough. Fatawu was nowhere near that one, it's not any fault of his own. It's just the ball was too far forward by James Justin. Tried to switch it across the long diagonal and it was too long of a diagonal ball and ended up for a Bristol City throw in on the far side. But so far that compact nature of Bristol City's defending out of possession. It's holding the spaces, although when they give it away in these positions, Leicester carve them open. Here's Mavadidi. Dewsbury Hall back to Mavadidi. Across to Winks. Now Justin. Find that left hand side again, Leicester. Mavadidi and Dewsbury Hall linking up there, but Mavadidi's beaten away there. And the ball forced up the pitch. Back to Yannick Vestergaard for Leicester. Justin. Through the lines to find Vardy. He'd run off his defender. Vardy with a ball in behind. Mavadidi made the run. The keeper was coming. But Mavadidi made him go back. And Mavadidi with a cross. Away by Rob Dickey. Mavadidi. Trying to win it back again. Under pressure. Keeps the ball in play. Finds Justin. Now Dewsbury Hall. Good tempo this from Leicester. Mavadidi again. Again down that left flank. Trying to take on a man. And George Tanner was the man he tried to take on. Wanted a foul. Thought that he was fouled there by George Tanner. But the referee saw no issues. And just a goal kick to Bristol City. Which is the correct decision. I would say. Mometi and Tanner both in coverage there for Bristol City. Doubling up on Mavadidi on that left hand side. The home side. O'Leary, playing it out, a bit over hit that one, Bristol City get themselves caught in possession but actually it, the foul will go their way, Abdul Fatawu handling the ball and that's a free kick to Bristol City then, just inside their own half so a bit of luck. So this is the early of the 12 games. Bristol City against Leicester. And we also have another game uh, getting underway at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Millwall against West Brom at the Den. We'll keep you up to date with that one. Uh, scores as they happen. Nine 3 o'clock kickoffs. I'll tell you about those in a moment. Because here come Bristol City. Here's Tommy Conway. Force a big save. And then the follow-up. Fantastic saves by Mads Hermanson. Back-to-back. But it will be a corner as he couldn't keep it in play. But we'll see this again. Really good 1-2 link up between Bristol City in the midfield. Ball in behind. Tommy Conway. One on one with Vite Fast. Takes him on. Strikes it with his right foot. Good save by Hermans. And then followed up by Scott Twine. Forces another save. Oh, as the cross came in there. Chowdhury was in trouble. But the referee saw nothing wrong with that one. But two huge saves by Hermanson. Then the corner comes in here. Short corner. Whipped it. Find its way out. And then it's whipped in eventually. And it's just a tussle between Chowdhury and Rob Dickey there. And nothing more of that. But it's a huge double save from Mads Hermanson there to deny Bristol City the opening goal. Back to back. Reactionary saves. Good saves by the Leicester keeper. He's been the busier of the two goalkeepers so far. 
Unless they want to change that. Here's Harry Winks. Fatawu down the right hand side. Trying to work his way through. Nice brick of the ball. Switches it across to Mavadidi. Now trying to find Dewsbury Hall. But all the way marked was Kenan Dewsbury Hall. And Zach Viner there in his way. Cleared it out for a Leicester throw. As it was saying, nine three o'clock kickoffs uh, this afternoon for you before we have two late games. Blackburn against Ipswich at 5.30 at Ewood Park, followed by our game late this evening, 8 o'clock tonight, from Vicarage Road, as Watford take on Leeds United. Fatawu complaining, wanted a foul there, but the referee again said no. And goal kick again has been signalled for Bristol City, so... That physicality in their favour at the moment. Leicester a bit frustrated by that physicality by Bristol City so far. Now a lot can happen over this weekend. I mean, we said every season, but the Easter weekend is huge. And here come Bristol City again. And the referee had a decision to make there because there was a Bristol City player down in the box. Just as I looked back to my monitor for the feed, I saw a Bristol City player one-on-one. -on -one. I have to see a replay. But a decision had to be made there and the referee said no penalty. Here's Mavadidi. It's Leicester come forward down the left-hand side again with Steffi Mavadidi. Cuts it back. James Justin breaking into space. Justin! Flashed it wide, but... Good opportunity there. But we'll have to see this replay again. It's one on one. It's Scott, Scott Twine, Tommy Conway, sorry. Battling with White Fast. And then he gets the better of Fast. Gets the ball. Fast just doesn't deal with it. Bodies him away, does uh, Tommy Conway. And Conway takes it down. Touches with it with his instep. Takes it completely away from White Fast. And he just bundles over after a tussle. I think it's a bit soft for a penalty. But Vite Fast got away with one there, really, because it could have been even worse. Could have found himself right at the heart of a mistake that could have found his side in a bothered position. Tommy Conway and Scott Twine really causing those Leicester defenders problems early on in this game. Here's Dewsbury Hall, though. Fatawu. Half cleared there by Dickey. Mavadidi now. And that's well intercepted by Bristol City to get it away. Oh, was options and pinched away from Conway. Did Mavadidi try to feed it through for Vardy, but blocked off pretty firmly there. As Scott Twine looks to get Bristol City up the pitch. Breaks away from Chaudhry. Lays it off to Conway. Now Mimetti on the right-hand side. End-to-end -end game at the moment. Mimetti. Knights. Bit misplaced, but picked up nicely. Cross comes in from Pring. Mimetti was waiting, but James Justin didn't allow it to get its way to him. And cleared it away behind for the corner. Good cross by Cameron Pring from the left-hand side. Another whipping cross on the edge of the six-yard box. And Anas Mimetti was waiting at the back post. And James Justin got there ahead of him and put it behind for the... Bristol City corner. But again, the Robins really testing Leicester's defence early on in this game. Whipped out swinging corner. Met by the head of a Bristol City player, but the header was straight into the hands of Mads Hermanson, who had firm grip on that ball. We have more action as well on Easter Monday as well for you. We'll tell you about that. Two more games to come for you on Easter Monday as well. We'll inform you of those games uh, later this afternoon. But some exciting, uh, uh, cracking weekend uh, of action here on LFS. We have the Premier League uh, on Easter Saturday and Easter Sunday. Double header on Sunday, of course. The race for the Premier League title, the fight for the title. Liverpool host Brighton, followed by the big one. Manchester City against against Arsenal at the Etihad. Before that, we have Newcastle and West Ham at lunchtime tomorrow as well. So, four championship games 
three Premier League games, seven games in the space of four days for you on Easter weekend. One not to be missed. Then midweek action in the Premier League as well, next midweek as well. It's non-stop, wall-to-wall football here on LFS, the white, right the way through April and to, towards the end of the season. 21 minutes gone at Ashton Gate and we're still deadlocked at nil-nil. And so far, I have to say, it's been very, very impressive from Bristol City. Their counter-attacking ability, although that's good challenge by Chowdhury. Bristol City wanted a foul, but the referee said let, let it go again. He's letting a few things go, this referee, this afternoon. That's what we like to see. I'd like to see... File after file, Andrew Kitchen is the referee this afternoon. Cooking up a storm in that. The centre of the pitch this afternoon. That didn't work. I tried to go for a joke, it didn't work. <laughs> Nonetheless. Good interception, a oh, wicked deflection though. Unlucky from Bristol City there. Here's Dewsbury Hall. Mavadidi down the left. And can't find space. Back to Justin. Now Mavadidi again. Double marked. Mavadidi trying to break the lines. Couldn't find Dewsbury Hall. Bounce back to Justin. Vestigard. Now Fass. Straight up the middle. Vardy battling. Linking up the ball. Nice work by Leicester. Winks. Dewsbury Hall. Now Winks again. Halfway through the first half. At Ashton Gate and Leicester forcing it there a bit from Vestigard and giving the ball away. They got away with that one because Bristol City got a bit impatient. And James Justin was there to intercept the ball and deny uh, Bristol City a chance at attack. But as I was saying, that counter-attacking ability from Bristol City has been very impressive so far. Um, that ability to just get the ball to either Tommy Conway or Scott Twine or Anas Mometi and just burst with pace. And really kind of catch out the Leicester defenders so far in this one. The likes of a fight fast has been caught one or two times in the game. And caught kind of short. Kind of shocked in a way. And he's been bodied one or two times as well. And that's exactly the type of approach that Bristol City need to have. But they also need to be very strong defensively themselves. Because Leicester have a multitude of talent. And here they come. Here's Fatawu with an early cross. That one was a bit too early for Vardy and cleared away by Rob Dickey. Bit impatient there, but here come Leicester again. Positive signs. Fatawu broke his way through. And a block by Cameron Pring would put it behind for a Leicester corner. If I'm not mistaken, that's Leicester's first corner of the afternoon. Juice behold to take it. Right hand side. It'll be an in swinging corner with the left boot. Here it comes. Whipped across. Too much. Too deep. From Kiernan Juice behold. And Vite Fast was closest, but he was still quite a few yards away in the end from that corner. And I think. Shows that Leicester are out of practice in the corners in the game so far. It's not a surprise that that's their first one. Considering it wasn't particularly top quality at all from Kiernan Dewsbury Hall. All the way through. Strip behind for Bristol City goal kick. And here they come. O'Leary goes long. He's left. There's a left uh, a bit on him there to Jamie Vardy. Left on Max O'Leary, which will give Bristol City the free kick. Just as he was kicking the ball away. He got the ball away, O'Leary, but Vardy a bit overzealous on that challenge. And kind of left one in on the Bristol City keeper, which gets the Robins keeper a free kick. Jimmy Vardy still proving a massive player for Leicester this season, as I've already mentioned. Their only win in their last five. Jamie Vardy did get that winner in that 
1-0 win over Sunderland at the Stadium Elite. As I mentioned previously as well in my opener, Leicester won the reverse fixture by one goal to nil from a Jamie Vardy penalty. So as tight as tight could be in that reverse fixture at the King Pyre Stadium. But here comes Fatawu bursting. Tried to break his way through, but really good covering. Fantastic covering by Cameron Pring. Followed him all the way through and got the block in. Denied him a shot at it. And now Chowdhury, a bit frustrated there, gives away a free kick. Really positive from Bristol City. I mean, we look at the stats so far. Leicester without a shot on target. They've had more of the possession, the Foxes, 57% to... Uh, Bristol City's 43%, but they've only had three shots, none of them on target. Bristol City, in stark contrast to that, eight shots, four on target. But here come Leicester again. That's awful from Mavadidi. What was that ball? That is a real shame, that. That was not good at all from Steffi Mavadidi. Vestergaard won the ball back. And it's just a, a real... It's just an easy ball. But Mavadidi just fires it completely off target. Nowhere near the target of Jamie Vardy. And messed that Leicester attack up. Steffi Mavadidi hasn't been at the same pace in 2024 as he was in 2023. Calendar year wise. Eight goals and 25 appearances in twenty in the 2023 set of games of this season. 12 appearances in 2024. Only two goals. So a drop there in form. Not huge, but it is crucial. Those one or two goals can mean a big difference in results, especially in tight games, which Leicester have been massively a part of in recent weeks. Most of those tight games have gone against them. They do have a chance from a set piece here. Free kick high up inside the Bristol City half. On the right hand side, it's Harry Winks and Kieran Jewsby Hall over it. Chance to whip a ball in. Winks with the right foot, whips it across fast with the header down and headed it wide across goal. Gold, an opportunity for Vite Fast to give Leicester the lead. Whipped to the back post. Beautiful cross by Harry Winks. What a great free kick. Pinpoint towards Vite Fast at the back post and connected nicely with it. Headed it down onto the ground and narrowly wide of that right post. And narrowly evaded James Justin as well, who was waiting. Unlucky for Leicester, but here come Bristol City with a quick transit responding. They get the bounce of the ball. Here's Mametti from distance. Telegraph that one completely high and wide from Anas Mametti. And that one's into the crowd. Again, got a brick of the ball there, did Bristol City. Yeah, and Mametti just completely whipped that one far too high and wide. Completely miscued that. Behind for a goal kick. He's flick on, intercepted. Ball comes right back to Vite Fast, who heads it to safety to Mads Hermanson's hands in the Leicester goal. Just under a half an hour gone in the first of our two Good Friday games here on LFS this afternoon. Do not forget this evening we are at Vicarage Road as Watford take on Leeds United. And we'll see kind of the storyline for that game. Depends on... Uh, Upon what happens here this afternoon. Because it could end up going Leeds' way. If Leicester do drop points here. Leeds could really put pressure on them. If Leeds win later. And Leicester say for example draw this game. That would mean that Leicester would be two points behind Leeds United. With a game in hand of course. Oh Jimmy Fardy. Oh my god, a whisker wide of that left post. Oh my goodness me. Lovely ball by Chowdhury. Broke the lines. Mavadidi coming narrow. With a 
Diagonal run through the middle. And Jimmy Vardy on the end of it. Right footed. And many times we've seen that. Breaks away from a defender and fires it into the far corner. It's almost Jimmy. It's Jimmy Vardy esque of a type of finish. But he didn't find the back of the net this time. Inches wide of that left post. A hair's whisker of a difference. And that could have been 1 0 to Leicester. But in the end, it wasn't. Ooh, that's a high boot from James Justin there. Free kick's gone Bristol City's way, but James Justin studs up there. But just a free kick given by referee Andy Kitchen. Free kick taken quickly. Justin with the header to intercept. Jewsbury Hall involved in a collision. or in a battle for the ball, and the ball will bounce behind for a Leicester goal kick. As I was mentioning then, that game between Millwall and West Bromwich Albion. Um, at the moment, they're still not underway, but we do have team news for you from that one. So, um, we'll actually read that team news at half time for you because I guarantee if I start reading team news from Millwall against West Brom right now, there will be a goal in this game. It's just the way it happens. It's strange how that happens, but that's the way it goes. Here's Harry Winks. Nice ball, chipped out to Fass on the right-hand side. He's got bodies with him. Here's Fatalwu, the one. Back to Fass, who continued his run and chipped it back. Across goal and away by Bristol City. Justin. Now Jewsbury Hall. In behind as Rob Dickey battles away against his opposite number and fight Fass at centre-back and... Well, Bristol City get the ball cleared. Leicester try and play it forward again. Put it out of play for Bristol City throw. So, t uh, the game uh, at the the Den. Could, forgot, completely forgot the name of the, the ground there. Uh, is now underway. So, we will keep you up to date with that game. Uh, between Millwall and West Bromwich Albion. Just to understand the kind of metrics of that game. Millwall at the moment. After a good, decent run of form. Three wins in the last five, only losing to Leeds in that run, beating Southampton, Watford, and Birmingham City in their last five. Millwall come into the game in a comfortable 16th place um, and would be sitting four points above the relegation zone. A win would be huge for their hopes of escaping that relegation battle with a few games to go. West Bromwich Albion, on the other hand, well, they want to really gather their grips on a uh, top six spot they can uh, extend their lead uh, on Norwich in sixth West Brom in fifth uh, to eight points before Norwich play this afternoon uh, as Norwich uh, welcome Plymouth but that top six spot for West Brom huge and they want to really put their seal on stamp on that spot in fifth place the top six really it's only sixth place that's up for grabs at the moment the rest all kind of solidified as it stands. But anything can still happen. You never know. That's the excitement of this double weekend. As here come Bristol City on the counter attack. Scott Twine had a shot blocked. Back to Jason Knight. Spreads it wide. Just a slip there from Anas Mametti. And that play from Bristol City comes to a very rapid end. As I was mentioning, don't forget then that second game of the, of the day of our Good Friday action here in the Championship, including a roundup of the day's uh, results as well. From 8 o'clock this evening from Vicarage Road, Watford against Leeds United. Okay. 10 minutes to go in the first half here at uh, Ashton Gates and it's Bristol City nil, Leicester City nil. Both sides have come close. Leicester probably the closer of the two on their options, but a giveaway there. It's a poor ball. Jason Knight with a shot. Takes a deflection. Cries of harm. Ball from the crowd. Hamza Chowdhury, the man in question, but the referee thinks just going to give a corner here, I believe. 
Jeez, the Knight hit that beautifully. But again, lapse of concentration from Leicester as the, free, uh, the corner's ticking short. Spring couldn't find a bit of space. The ball will bounce back out. Scott Twiney took the corner. Took the throw in. Back to Matty James. Bristol City. I mean, a goal for them will be huge. The last time they scored against Leicester in the Championship, the last time they scored against Leicester was at Ashton Gate back a good long time ago. Listen to this. The last time that Bristol City scored against Leicester was in March 2012. That was three meetings ago. They have only met three times in the last 12 years. Um, sorry, four times in the last 12 years. Apologies. As here comes Bristol City again. They're battling. Scott Twine with a shot again. Cleared away by Leicester. But they need to take these opportunities. And now Leicester on the counter-attack. Here's Jimmy Vardy. He's got Mavadidi trying to join him. Vardy looking to whip it across. Blocked away. Vardy back on the points. Jimmy Vardy. Ever so close again. Goodness me. Jimmy Vardy on the uh, the, the counter-attack. Tried to find Mavadidi. He was in the box. The ball cleared away. Not fully. Vardy comes pouncing back in on it. Wins it, takes it to the byline and tries to cut it from a narrow angle. Ended up going wide again, but huge opportunities at both ends. But still no breakthrough. You feel it. The goal, when it comes, it's going to come. But when it comes, whichever team gets it, it will be huge. Because the impact that both sides have had on attacking areas. Leicester still without a shot on target, by the way. But that hasn't stopped them from having opportunities in this game whatsoever. They've been threatening. Bristol City. If they go in at half-time goalless, surely they will be kicking themselves. Because they've had golden opportunities with Scott Twine and Tommy Conway and Anas Mamete. And chase the night even in this first half. Where they should find themselves at the very least. One goal up against Leicester. But when you don't take these opportunities. That is when the big sides. The top sides. Carve you open. And do the business. When you let them off the hook. You're going to get punished. But Bristol City need to hope that. They have more opportunities to come. I've no doubt that they will because at the moment, from what I can see, they're performing really, really well so far. Bristol City and Leicester lucky to be hanging in in this game. But top sides hang in there and get the result no matter what. It's fast. Chowdhury over the top for Tawu with a run. And the ball, the bounce of the ball didn't help Leicester there. Bounced at their own time for Abdul Fatawu and bounced away and behind for a Bristol City goal kick. I'm sure Liam Manning will be wondering his side. Hi, they aren't ahead in this game. But we'll know at half time if it is goalless. It can come out in the second half. And they can go for it. It's not that they haven't been going for it. They do more of the same. And actually finish off one of their chances. Put it into the back of the net. Because they're certainly creating those opportunities. Hermanson. Oh Leicester again. Playing out from the back. Getting caught again. Mamete crosses it. Not completely confirmed or firm that one. Leicester can scramble it away, but again, Leicester playing out from the back. And just the high press from Bristol City is catching them out time and time again. Just faltering possession on the edge of their own 18-yard box, Leicester. But it's putting them under a lot of pressure. Making it a bit more scrappy than it needs to be. 
from their point of view anyway. Here's Vestergaard. Dewsbury Hall. Trying to wiggle his way through, but can't find it through a couple of Bristol, City's bo of Bristol City bodies. Has to go back. Comes a Chowdhury. Vestergaard. 41 minutes gone. Goalless here at Ashton Gate. Nice touch and spin from Dewsbury Hall. As Vardy gets the break of the ball. Now finds Fatawu on the right hand side. Here's Abdul Fatawu. Chops back on his man. Tried to break his way through, but Scott, uh, Cameron Pring had it covered all the way through and put it behind for the uh, Leicester City corner. I think Leicester are just trying to turn the screw a bit. Bristol City doing well defensively. Staying with their men, not allowing big gaps to open up. Staying compact, staying controlled, staying in their structure. They know what they need to do. In defensive areas. And Leicester with only their second corner of the afternoon. A change in their corner taker. Harry Winks to take it this time. It will be an outswinging corner. The first one was an inswinger by Dewsbury Hall. It went all the way through for a goal kick. This one's an outswinger. Winks to take. Right footed. Whipped across. Front post. And that one. Away from Vardy. And all the way through again. And this time it's come out at the other end. For a Bristol City goal uh, throw in. Rather than a goal kick this time. Another haphazard corner from Leicester. Certainly not top standard. Far from that. But I'm sure Liam Manning will be very happy with what his side have shown in these first 40, so, 40 minutes or so. In attacking areas. Not only in attacking areas but also defensively. Denying Leicester a shot on target so far. Holding them to half the shots that Bristol City have had in the game. 12 shots for Bristol City, 6 for Leicester. So both in attack and defence, Bristol City have probably been the better of the two sides, most certainly in this. But at the moment, Bristol City have the most shots in the first half this season. They have had their most shots in the first half this season in this game. 12 shots. Their most in one 45-minute first half this campaign. What a team to do it against as well. What a way to give you confidence. And I'm sure some of the Bristol City fans... Inside this stadium will be wondering where this performance has been in the last few weeks. As I mentioned with this poor run of form. One win in six for Bristol City has kind of seen them drop away from any sort of hopes of a playoff place. But they can still have a positive end to the season. After this, they have seven more games to see where their season can go. Still 21 points after this up for grabs. Which means if they draw this game. They can ha get up to at the very most 69 points. Which at the moment uh, is only two points ahead of West Brom. Who are drawing with Millwall. So top six certainly gone away from them. Usually top six is around 60-70 points. This season far more competitive. Much higher quality this season we're seeing from those top six. Very, very competitive. Leicester on 83 as it stands with the draw. 82 for Leeds. 81 for Ipswich. 73 for Southampton. 67 from West Brom as it stands. 61 from Norwich. <laughs> those top five, six, top five teams above the level. What we usually see around this stage of the season. For kind of playoff places and promotion hopes as we've surpassed the 45 minutes and the referee will just add the singular minute on to the end of this half so one added minute to the end of this first half at Ashton Gates where it is still goalless nice switch ball by Jewsbury Hall but couldn't find its way out to Fatawu covered again by Cameron Prink he's had a very strong first half this half Cameron Prink had 
Abdul Fatawu's number all afternoon. O'Leary with the long ball. Oh, bouncing through the middle and he will find his opposite number and uh, the opposite end of the pitch, Mads Hermanson. And that is the end of the first half. Whistle goes from Andy Kitchen on a deadlocked first half, but one where I would say Bristol City will be the happier of the two teams, not only because of the scoreline, but their performance as well. Bristol City have been probably the better of the two teams, and this kind of performance from Leicester, they need the result, but so far, the performance is lacking a bit. Half time at Ashton Gates in the first of our 12 fixtures on Good Friday in the Championship. It is Bristol City nil, Leicester City nil. Welcome back to EFL Championship Live, the race for promotion in the EFL Championship. Back to the Premier League and Leicester City at halftime at Ashton Gates are goalless uh, in their game against Bristol City. Uh, at the moment, Leicester, as it stands, would be going back top of the Championship table ahead of Leeds United, uh, who play later this evening. In our other game, uh, a uh, the other game that's underway in the championship this afternoon at 1 o'clock kickoff between Millwall and West Bromwich Albion. A few issues uh, with our a few technicals here. Apologies about this. Uh, trying to resolve this issue. Anyway, uh, Millwall against West Bromwich Albion, as I mentioned there, is also goalless. They kicked off at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, in that one, Millwall, of course, looking to bridge that gap to the bottom at uh, uh, half of the table that relegation battle West Brom looking to solidify their place inside the top five at the moment and as it stands it is goalless uh, no shots in that game after 17 minutes so a bit of uh, possession tennis shall we say but West Brom having the better of it in the early stages but no breakthrough as of yet Millwall nil uh, West Brom and Shelbyan nil Right, quickly before we uh, r uh, give you a bit of half-time breather, uh, let's just have a look at the 3 o'clock kickoffs in the Championship this afternoon. Nine 3 o'clock kickoffs uh, in the Championship. A lot of action, so I'll run you through some quick details about those 3 o'clockers. And uh, in our late stream this evening, we will round up all of these results for you this afternoon. So do not worry about that. You'll not miss a thing here on LFS this afternoon. Right, so those 9 3 o'clockers, we start at the Cardiff City Stadium, where Cardiff hosts Sunderland at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, Cardiff, who themselves are in good form, four wins in their last five, but the opposite for Sunderland winless in their last five losing four of those drawing just the one of their last five they sit both 11th and 12th Cardiff 11th Sunderland 12th uh, outside hopes really for Cardiff you'd have to say of a playoff place if they win this afternoon and results go their way they could find themselves edging closer but still only on 53 points which leaves them nine points or sorry eight points adrift of top six but it's not impossible 
with eight games to go for Cardiff. Still hope, still a chance. Not really, surely, for Sunderland to set five points behind them. Contrast. Next up, Huddersfield against Coventry. We are, uh, are at the John Smith Stadium. Uh, Huddersfield themselves in the bottom three uh, on 39 points. Level on points with Birmingham above them. Birmingham above them who are just outside the bottom three. Uh, very, very tight between those bottom teams. They win this afternoon, Huddersfield. They could prop themselves up a good distance away from the, the, the relegation zone. But... Uh, it is still very, very tight down there. Coventry in stark contrast to that. They win this afternoon, considering they have a game in hand on the rest of the teams in and around them. They have nine games to go. The rest usually uh, all around them have eight. Um, Coventry win their game this afternoon. They'll be within a point of Norwich, but of course Norwich playing at the same time. But they do have that game in hand, uh, Coventry, which could be crucial for them this season. Uh, in the, uh, the next game at the MKM Stadium between Hull City and Stoke City. Again, one side chasing top 6-1, the other trying to avoid the drop. Hull City on the verge of top 6 plays. They win this afternoon. Of course, they also have a game in hand on Norwich City above them. They are only three points behind Norwich. They can go level on points if they win and Norwich lose this afternoon. But they do have a game in hand as well. Hull, which gives them that bit of momentum. Stoke, on the other hand, will Stoke, they sit at just a point, uh, two points above the relegation zone. They want to kind of break away from that if they want to get a big win away from home. They are uh, looking to escape the bottom three. A bit up and down for Stoke recently. Uh, loss, win, loss, win, loss. That is their last five games. So up and down, topsy-turvy form. Hull, uh, Hull, on the other hand, unbeaten in the last five, but considering they've won just one of those, one win, four draws in the last five games. Hull, a few big droppages of points in there, but still remaining unbeaten, which is still a positive uh, for them. All the talk about the teams trying to chase this team in Norwich. They play Plymouth this afternoon. Norwich themselves, not bad run of form. Three wins in the last five. Just lost one of those. Plymouth, on the other hand, um, uh, winless in the last four. One win in their last five. Lost three of those. Norwich sit in the top six, as I said. They can try and solidify that place and close the gap to West Brom above them if they win this afternoon and try and solidify that place from the chasing pack below them, who all have a game in hand in Hull, Preston and Coventry, all below Norwich. Plymouth, on the other hand, well, they want to kind of bridge the gap, as I mentioned, to the bottom three. They only sit two points off relegation. 18th for Plymouth. It shows how tight they are. They're 18th and only two points off the relegation zone. Next up, Preston against Rotherham. Preston, of course, uh, a deep deal this afternoon. Preston, as I mentioned, one of the chasing pack, chasing Norwich for that other playoff place alongside Coventry and Hull, who, interestingly, uh, all but one of those chasing pack are at home this afternoon. Coventry, the only away side out of those uh, four teams. Uh, Preston on 56 points. They're five points behind Norwich, but as I mentioned, still, they have a game in hand, so if they win... And win their game in hand, they could be very much in a shout uh, with Norwich there. Rotherham, who sit rock bottom, they are all but dying really at this stage of the season. Let's be honest, they sit 19 points clear of safety. They are just awaiting their fate. Um, they could, if results go against them, they could find themselves uh, relegated this afternoon at Rotherham United. They are, as I mentioned... 19 points clear of safety and they are uh, 24 points still up for grabs but if they lose today and Birmingham or Huddersfield or one of those teams outside of the bottom three get to 41 points or more they will be relegated this afternoon Rotherham with only 21 points out to play for and they could find themselves 21 or even 22 points adrift of safety. Uh, so Rotherham could have their fate sailed this afternoon. Next up at the Loftus Road, it's QPR against Birmingham uh, in their game. Um, QPR themselves, uh, two wins in their last five, winless in their last three. Birmingham without a win in their last five, four of those defeats. Uh, those two, a real scuffle between those two. QPR in 20th. 
Birmingham in 21st. This is a huge six-pointer. This could be massive for the end of the season for these two teams. QPR on 40 points. Birmingham on 39 points. Birmingham above Huddersfield outside the relegation zone on goal difference. Listen to this. The difference is goals conceded. Birmingham set just two goals of a difference between them and Huddersfield. Birmingham minus 17 goal difference, minus 19 for Huddersfield. Fairly close indeed. Very, very close. QPR just above them on 40 points. Sheffield Wednesday against Swansea is the next one. That's at Hillsborough this afternoon. Sheffield Wednesday who find themselves inside the bottom three. Second bottom, but uh, uh, still with a shout of safety themselves. They could win and results go their way. They could find themselves outside the bottom three. That's how tight it is this afternoon. Their goal difference is much worse than anyone else around them. Minus 31, the wor uh, second worst in the championship this season. Uh, Swansea find themselves fairly mid-table, really. Uh, around about where Bristol City are at this moment in time. Not threatened by relegation, but also nowhere near chances of hopes of promotion. But Swansea... Want to keep that momentum up. Do not want to give up hope. They've lost uh, one of their last five. Swansea. Sheffield Wednesday have lost two of their last five. So they're in pretty good form. Three wins in their last five for Sheffield Wednesday. Positive form for both teams. Swansea want to keep the gap to the bottom three. Fairly uh, significant. Seven points at the moment. Uh, and the final three o'clock kickoff. It's a long run of uh, running through those games. It's Southampton against Middlesbrough. Southampton two defeats in their last five. Middlesbrough just the one defeat in the last five. Unbeaten in the last four. Middlesbrough. Southampton in fourth at the moment. Of course, have a lot of games in hand on the teams above them. Two games in hand on Ipswich above them. And three games in hand on West Brom below them. At West Brom playing, as, of course, at the moment. Southampton on 73 points. Uh, they could uh, bridge that gap to uh, Ipswich. If they win their two games in hand, they could find themselves within two points of Ipswich. So that promotion, uh, the automatic promotion places, certainly not a drift of Southampton, but they need to win their games in hand. Middlesbrough, they're just off the chasing pack at the moment. Maybe an outside hope if they win uh, the majority of their remaining games and keep in very good form. But an outside hope, it seems at the moment, six, 54 points. They stand seven points adrift of, uh, of the top six at the moment, Middlesbrough. But it's not out of the question. And then the two late games, Blackburn Rovers against Ipswich and Watford against Leeds as well. What Watford Leeds we will have on LFS this evening. We have a goal in our early game this afternoon at the Den. It happened quite a while ago and it has gone to the home side. It is Millwall that have taken the lead. Duncan Watmore with the goal. Their first shot on target of the afternoon, Millwall, has them ahead. At the Den, Millwall 1, West Bromwich Albion 0. Which means, as it stands, Millwall will go 7 points, adrift, uh, seven points clear of the bottom 3. With all of the teams above them still yet to play. So we could close that gap back to, to 4 points. But this is a crucial lead that they have at this moment in time. West Brom though would remain only 5 points clear of Norwich. With Norwich still having to play. Which closed that gap to two points if Norwich win this afternoon and West Brom lose. Right, so 1 0 there. Goal list between Bristol City and Leicester, where the second half is on the way next. Welcome back to the race for promotion, Bristol City against uh, Leicester. Don't forget later this evening we have more championship action on the way for you uh, in our Good Friday bumper action. Uh, all 12 games this Good Friday. Watford against Leeds tonight at 8 o'clock from Vicarage Row. As Leeds look to respond to whatever Leicester can do this afternoon. 
uh, in their game later this evening. You can watch that live on LFS. I'll be here for live commentary of that one for you. Right. All 22 players back out on the field at Ashton Gates. Ready to go for another 45 minutes of action. And these two sides have a lot to play for. An even game on the score sheet. Bristol City have edged it. But Leicester have some responding to do. And they want all three points in the process of trying to do so. And retake top spot in the championship this afternoon. As we get back on the way from Andy Kitchen's whistle. Leicester get us back on the way for the second half through Jimmy Vardy. And we'll see what they can offer in this second 45. A first half which really lacked a lot from Leicester really. Including their quality in the final third. But it's more praise on Bristol City. They've been much, the, they were the better side in that first half in attacking areas. And defensively as well. Leicester just need to kind of tighten up a bit. And be a bit more controlled. And they can find their lead in this game. But Bristol City on the other hand. Continue what they were doing in that first half. And they could have a positive. Very positive result here this afternoon. So Bristol City can nearly free kick there. And the rain starting to pour. Light rain early on. But who knows. That could affect things. Add another spanner into the works. That's a nice move down the right-hand side. Viner's ball finds it across. Was Tanner and waiting there was Conway, but blocked off by Vestigard. Good opportunity. Break down the right-hand side. Something they spotted at half-time, Bristol City, clearly. And they almost made it work early on, but... Good block by Vestigard to deny him. Nice ball, but... Unlucky. And then Mavadidi's just fouled at the other end, so... Free kick to Leicester around the halfway line. Here's Hermanson to Chaudhry. Out to fight fast. Back to Hermanson. Vestigard. Jewsbury Hall. Wayward in his pass. Gives it back to Bristol City. Knight to Pring. Good pressing by Wilfred and Didi there to block it off. But puts it out for a throw in. Wilfred and Didi. Had a fairly quiet first half really. Can't remember saying his name too many times. Wilfred and Didi in that first half. Bristol City with a throw in. Taken down. Matty James. Back to Dickey who heads it back to O'Leary. Talk recently. Liam Manning very kind of honest and open about his side's lack of finishing ability. We've seen more of that this afternoon. That just inability to finish off their chances. They're creating a lot of them. It's just their inability to put them in the back of the net. And it's a known problem to Bristol City. It's not something they're enamoured about. As they come forward again. Tommy Conway. Back to Pring. Battling nicely. Feeds it through. Nice ball. Cuts back. Here's Scott Twine. Can't take the space to find the shot. And Chowdhury under pressure. Leicester pounced upon there defensively. But another good opportunity for Bristol City. Another good opportunity again. It was Hayden Roberts that got them forward. And Scott Twine had the chance. But flag goes up in the end, I think. I don't know what that's about. Maybe the aftermath. But Scott Twine had a good opportunity. Just couldn't eat the space. That was the issue. Just got caught between a few Leicester bodies inside the 18 yard box and couldn't find that tiniest bit of space to open up the shot. But 
Long run from Vestigard there, but Didi had made the run through the middle and it just bounced its way through to Max O'Leary in the Bristol City goal. O'Leary goes long. Vass had that covered after Conway's run. Chowdhury brings it down. Battling there was Ndidi but lost that battle. Twine won the throw in. Takes the throw in. Here's Rob Dickey. Yeah, and it looks like Bristol City have taken a bit more of a foothold. That's a lovely move from Leicester, though. Here's Vardy linking up beautifully. One on one chance. Great save. Followed up. Here's Mavadini. What a great save again. Two fantastic saves by Max O'Leary. Just as I was saying that Bristol City got a foothold. Leicester on the break. Beautiful first time reverse ball by Jamie Vardy round the corner. Linking up with uh, Dewsbury Hall. Then back to Vardy for one on one. Big save by O'Leary. Then the ball bounces back out. Mavadidi has a chance at it. He strikes it again. Big save by O'Leary. Two huge opportunities for Leicester. And O'Leary got a massive round of applause and a cheer from the home crowd. Because there were two huge saves. By the Bristol City keeper. To deny Leicester two huge opportunities to take the lead. Chowdhury. That will give Leicester confidence though. Really. There are only two shots on target in the game. Actually. Without a shot on target in that first half Leicester. Already had two in the second half. One after another. On that occasion, but couldn't find the net from either. Denied by Max O'Leary. So both keepers have made some huge saves this afternoon to deny the opposition. The first goal of the day. Dewsbury Hall. Down the left is Mavadidi. He's got bodies to run towards. Takes the outside option. Goes for the cross. It's a deep one. And I th might have took a deflection. I think it did. Take a deflection. Just seeing the chance again. Dewsbury Hall with a ball. Lovely ball. Vardy one on one. And he just kind of pings it towards O'Leary. He doesn't really compose himself. Vardy takes it first time. And that good save by O'Leary. Bounces back out. Mavadidi has another chance. And another fantastic reactionary save by Max O'Leary. So corner. For Dewsbury Hall to take for Leicester. Left footed in, swinging one. To the back post. Over the head of Vardy. And Didi to recover. Recycle the ball. Harry Winks. Now out to the right. For Tawu. Winks. Now Justin. Out to the left is Mavadidi. Body's in the box. Can he find one of them? Mavadidi with a cross. Took a deflection, but... The reflection actually helped Bristol City and now they come on the break. Scott Twine. And the ball to Tommy Conway is just a bit wayward. And allows Leicester back in to retrieve the ball and get themselves on the front foot again. Winks. Yannick Vestergaard. Chowdhury. Ball over the top. Vardy with the run in behind. Vardy tips it across. But too much. And that one to Fatawu. And out for a Bristol City throw. Jimmy's, Jimmy Vardy's impact so far has not been lost upon Leicester. Had a couple of opportunities. Had four shots in the game. Jimmy Vardy, one on target, three off target. He's hit the woodwork once. He's missed two big chances this afternoon. But he'll not let that phase him. Jimmy Vardy, regardless, he will go again and take, try and take the next opportunity when it comes. Vestigard. 
Justin, back to Vestergaard through the middle. Now Dewsbury Hall, over the top, runs from Ndidi and Vardy, and Didi got the ball, Vardy made the run through the middle, Didi out in the left-hand side, linking up with Mavadidi, now Justin with the ball forward, here's Dewsbury Hall, now wide on the left is Justin, back in field to Winks, Increasing tempo here from Leicester. Quicker passing. Lovely through the lines. Here's Winks. Dewsbury all with a cross. Indeedy with a header. Bounces back down to Fatawu. He tried to flick it. Couldn't find a teammate and cleared away by Bristol City. Leicester getting more confident on the ball. Increasing the pace and the tempo with their passing. Something they didn't do in that first half. More or less something that Bristol City didn't allow them to do really. And that was a oh, mistake by Abdul Fatabu there. A couple of times he's just miscontrolled the ball. Leicester. Again. It comes to nothing. So ten minutes gone of the second half. Still a long, long way to go. The game could go either way, of course, but it seems at the moment Leicester had the better of the last few plays and moments. And Bristol City win the free kick on the halfway line. Scott Twine won it. Scott, Scott Twine will take it. Back to Roberts. Across the Rob Dickey Knight. Viner. Dickey again, through the middle, tonight, down the left, was Roberts, beat past Chowdhury, right. finds Twine in field, laid off first time there by Jason Knight, but given away, here's Dewsbury Hall, he's caught in possession, and he's just a bit too much left on Kieran Dewsbury Hall there, and that'll be a free kick to Leicester. We all know what this time of the season means. The run in. The pressure is heavy. It's about who can step up to the plate. Step up to the mark and get the job done. Right footed fizz ball by Ndidi. Headed down by Fatawu. Back to Vite Fass. Who's... Made the run on the right flank, right fast, chips it across, and too deep. Chipped, gone the wrong way behind for a goal kick to Bristol City. At least they're changing things up, Leicester. They're not repeating the same thing over and over. They're trying different options, different combinations, different ideas. Maybe, maybe... Might need to look at to the bench, Enzo Moresca. Soon indeed. Maybe not just now, but... Soon indeed, oh, mistake! By Leicester, and... The flag was up against Tommy Conway there anyway, but... He missed the shot, missed the target. Goodness me, again, it's Leicester. Causing their own problems. Yeah. It was Chowdhury facing his own goal. Tried to play it round the corner. Gave it away and took a deflection off the... I think it was... I couldn't see who it was that pressed him. But whoever it did, it took a deflection. Found its way to Matt Tommy Conway. But Conway was offside when it did take a touch off the Bristol City player. Which made him be in an offside position. But... Um, again, Leicester getting themselves into trouble. That's where Bristol City find the most of their joy in that first half. They were the better side, but they were good at pouncing upon those Leicester kind of lapses of concentration. Their press was very, very good against Leicester high up. A very high press from Bristol City. They engaged it fairly quickly as well, fairly early in the phase. Whenever Leicester are playing out from the back, they do want to put that pressure on them, Bristol City, and so far on a couple of occasions, 
We've already seen this afternoon that it's worked, but so far they haven't been able to take the most of it. It's here, here on Leicester. Fatal, we find fast and fast with a cutback, but pound away by O'Leary, and then Bristol City clear their lines. But Max O'Leary with his position in there, that was huge, but Leicester somehow very fast as being there. Attacking outlet down that right hand side. Here's Fatawu. Indeedy. Now Fass. Across to Winks. Justin to Winks. Now Jewsbury Hall. Why to Mavadidi. Through the lines. Find Jewsbury Hall in the fainted ball. And the cut back. No one there. That's huge again. Dewsbury Hall on the cutback and no one there to meet it. Three Leicester bodies in the box, but they'd all skip forward. No one anywhere near it. Unlucky. But the pressure from Leicester starting to show. They're opening those spaces. They're finding those gaps in the Bristol City defence. And Liam Manning has spotted that. I think Scott Twine just coming back from injury. Long-term injury. He's coming off. And they made another substitution as well. So a double substitution for Bristol City at the IR mark. Surely that was pre-planned. I would have to say that that was pre-planned. Let's get confirmation of those for you there. Scott Twine and George Tanner coming off for Sykes and McCrory. So Mark Sykes and Ross McCrory replacing uh, George Tanner and Scott Twine. For Bristol City. So a double substitution for the Robins. To see if they can bring a few fresh legs on off for them a bit more in attack. Because they are coming under severe pressure from Leicester. Here's O'Leary. Oh, pressure. Played at their own game. Jewsbury Hall. Fardy. Oh, my goodness, mate. What's that? A mistake from Bristol City. What they've been doing to Leicester all day is pouncing upon them, playing out from the back. Bristol City, player from the back themselves, get themselves in all sorts of bother. And a one on one, Jamie Vardy. Five chances this afternoon he's had. And Max O'Leary gets the save on this one again. One on one. Almost literally could have been a penalty. It was that good of an opportunity for Leicester. And it's saved by O'Leary. Corner. Dewsbury Hall's corner. Overhit that one. And cannot be salvaged. By Leicester. My goodness me. Opportunities like that when you just have to think, is it just not Leicester's day? Max O'Leary plays it straight to Zach Viner, who's pressed upon by Dewsbury Hall instantly. Dewsbury Hall plays it straight to Jamie Vardy. And Vardy, all the goal to aim for. And he hits it straight at Max O'Leary, who puts it wide for the corner. But my goodness me. That is such a massive opportunity for Leicester. Another one gone a-begging. And as I said, you just have to wonder. The many opportunities they've had. Is it just not their day? Remember. They would, they would be wanting a win here, Leicester, today. Because if they only draw... They will, after level amount of games, unless they do have that game in hand on Leeds, but with Leeds, or Leicester playing early, and Leeds not playing till later this evening, they're on level games at the moment. 38 games played after this game for Leicester. And Leeds, having not played, are also on 38. Would mean that if they win their game in hand, Leicester, they would only be a point ahead of Leeds, rather than three, which they would be if they win this game. So, that huge that advantage that could come crucial 
at the end of the season would be completely er, a lot less than what it could have been. But still a long way to go, though. For Tawu's cross. Early cross this time, but cleared away. And then Chidri trying to keep it alive, but heads it out of play for a Bristol City throw. Half time at the den, it is Millwall 1, West Bromwich Albion 0. Uh, Duncan Watmore's goal separates the two sides. Millwall 7 points a clear of the drop zone now. West Brom just 5 points clear of Norwich in 6th, but uh, with Norwich playing at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Here's Chaudhry. Wins Leicester the throw in off Anas Mameti. So Chaudhry to take this throw in for Leicester. 25 minutes to go. Leicester. Golden opportunities in this second half. Haven't been able to take them. All three shots on target in this second half have been scoring opportunities. Massive scoring opportunities. And haven't taken any of them. All the talk about Liam Manning and Bristol City's failure to find the back of the net from good positions. And their inability to finish off good chances. Well, it's Leicester that are struggling at the moment. But here come Bristol City now as I talk. A chance for Mameti trying to eke a bit of space. Mameti. Couldn't pick, break his way through. Kept alive though by Mark Sykes. Trying to find a bit of space. Wins the throw in. This could be the moment. They've had so many opportunities. Leicester maybe. Bristol City will have another shot here. Mark Sykes. Cuts it back to the edge. Manny James with a cross. Bouncing around. Calls of handball. Referee says no. As Leicester clear their lines. Good pressure from Bristol City to win it back again. Pring. Down the left-hand side is Mimetti. Right foot across. Away by Fass. Good pressure by Dickey to win it back. Brings it down. Lays it off. Now to Hayden Roberts. Back to Dickey. Home crowd. Who've been quiet in the second half. Are finding their voice again. Their side's giving them a reason to. Viner. Vine, uh, Find Sykes. Sykes breaking the lines. Mark Sykes. Side netting. Good opportunity again for Leicester. Or for Le uh, Leeds. Bristol City. Against Leicester. Break down the right hand side. Sorry it wasn't Sykes. It was McCrory. Apologies. But a huge opportunity. Hit the side netting did Ross McCrory. Huge opportunity. Those fresh legs certainly offering something different for Bristol City there in attacking areas. And Leicester have had their spell of possession, their spell of dominance. It's a Bristol City's chance to respond. This fight fast picks up the ball for Leicester. Deadlock still yet to be broken. Fast with the ball. Over the top. Dewsbury all made the run, but that one will be caught by Max O'Leary. Who gets his side forward quickly. Here's Mometti. Finds the space on the left-hand side. Anas Mometti battling with two. Mometti goes down. Goal kick. It's a bit soft. That really. And a quick smile and giggle between Anas Mometi and Hamza Chowdhury after the, ma after the math there. They're going to make a change here again, Bristol City. So Tommy Conway is coming off. And Naki Wells is coming on in his place. An attacking change for Bristol City. Tommy Conway uh, leaving the pitch. Scored seven goals in the championship this season from 31 starts. 
Tommy Conway. Naki Wells. Three from 27 games. James Justin for Leicester. Dewsbury Hall. Leicester still yet to make a change in this game. So confidence from Enzo Moresca that his side can still get the result with the 11 on the field. Of course, if he needs to, he can turn to strength on the bench. You do have strength and depth on the bench, Leicester, in attacking areas if they need it. Patson Daka, Kelechi Inacho, Dennis Bryant, Yunus Akkun. They do have attacking quality on the bench. If they need it, and at the moment, they might need it. 20 minutes to go. Goalless at Ashton Gate. Is there a winning goal? Is there goals to come? <clears throat> Excuse me. Apologies. Had to clear my throat there. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, it's been a week and a half since doing a bit of commentary, so had to ease my way back in today. And I've got an. Ex oh, I've had a, a great game to do it so far. Want to have an exciting last twenty minutes. And don't forget this evening. We have another game in the championship for you. Watford against Leeds. Leeds who, if this result stays as it is, the scoreline stays as it is, they could find themselves two points clear of Leicester. Uh, if they win this evening, they could retake top spot Leeds. Watford uh, at the moment, they're very mid-table. No chance of top six for them. But they'll have lead to try and stop. And I could have a question. Here come Leicester. Chance. Oh, the man goes down. Zavardi went down. No, it wasn't. It was... Couldn't see. That was James Justin, maybe. But here they come again. Leicester ball whipped in. Vardy trying to work it. Fatawu! Missed the target. Oh, my goodness, mate. No composure at all from Abdul Fatawu there at the back post. Whip ball in from the left hand side over the head of Vardy. It bounces down to Abdul Fatawu in the middle. And all he has to do is try and find the net. He tries to go for the top spin curler. And he curls it wide of the left hand post. No composure at all there from Fatawa, who snatched at the ball. Massive opportunity. Another one gone a begging for Leicester. But here come Bristol City. Big chance here. On the edge of the box. Mamiti! What a finish! Anis Mamiti! After chance at the chance at the chance missed this afternoon. One is finally taken. And it's the home side that have broken the deadlock. Bristol City with an absolute banging finish from Anas Mometi. Take the lead against Leicester. Who hold top spot no more. Leicester have had ample opportunity to take the lead in this second half. And by mistake of their own again, it's where Bristol City have looked at their best today. That high press, pressing Leicester, pushing the pressure on the defence, not allowing them time and space to break away. And they pounce. And this time, they pounce with pure vigour and verve from Anas Mometi. Venom, ice in the veins. And that is a wonderful finish by Mometi. Bullet strike from the edge of the D. And Bristol City give themselves a real confident lead going into the final stages of this game. Bristol City 1, Leicester City 0. What a goal by Mimeti. 
And what a huge moment that could be as Bristol City come forward again. They want to make it even better. Lovely interchange of feet. And the shot from McCrory deflected by Mads Hermanson wide for the corner. What a change. What a difference a goal makes. Mark Sykes. Opportunity. Hermanson with a save. And... Ashton Gate is bouncing. Hayden Roberts with a corner. Left footed delivery. Dickey with a header on. And then the offside flag goes up. Against Naki Wells there. But. My goodness me. <laughs> the championship never fails to excite. Never fails to throw up storylines. This could be huge. Huge. Leicester lose today. And Leeds don't even need to win later. To maintain their top spot. Leicester lose. And Leeds will remain top of the table. And on level games as well. This game. This result as it stands. Would be a dream. For Leeds United. A nightmare for Leicester City. But it's not anywhere near a formality just yet. Leicester will not give up hope yet. And they've actually made cha a change or two. They've made a change. They're going to make another in a moment. Ricardo Pereira's getting ready. Kelechi Iheanacho has come onto the pitch. He's replaced Jimmy Vardy just after that goal was scored by... Uh, Anis Mimetti and Kelechi Inacho on for Vardy. They're going to make another change in a moment, Leicester. But just another look at this goal. What a finish. Absolutely pile-driving strike. Wonderful from Anis Mimetti. He gives us cheeky wink and smile. Buzzing is Anis Mimetti, I'm sure. The crowd inside Ashton get the home fans on their feet. They've got bums off seats now. And are loving this. Leicester who, as I said, on their worst form of the season. Coming into this. Three defeats in the last five games. Not something they're used to this season. But this is where the top teams get separated. This is where championship title chargers, this is where title winners show their prowess and their pedigree. When the going gets tough, do they step up and be counted? That is the difference. And Leeds at the moment are in on Clyde 9 and they haven't even played yet still time though here's Mimetti though Ooh, the cross straight into the hands of Hermanson and let's be honest Leicester have been the better side in the second half but overall what Bristol City have done so far an opportunity created the way they've pressed Leicester high it's been fantastic. But here come Leicester to try and respond. Kelechi Inacho. Find the back of the net. But was flagged offside. Inacho. Went a bit early there. Just see the replay. Narrow indeed. But he is offside. As tight as tight can be. But he is offside. Kelechi Inacho. Good spot by the assistant. That was close. And just to confirm that second change for Leicester for you, Ricardo Pereira coming onto the pitch, replacing Hamza Chaudhry. So Chaudhry off, Pereira on. Speaking of changes, Bristol City are going to make another one of their own. It's the last 11 minutes, and Jason Knight is going to make way. And Joe Williams is going to be his replacement. Jason Knight has done a firm... Fine job in midfield this afternoon for Bristol City. And 
Liam Manning wants fresh legs, and Joe Williams is going to bring that to the team. Let's see what impact he can have. So far, the other two substitutions for Bristol City, Naki Well, or sorry, the other three, um, McCrory, Sykes, and Wells, have all worked out. Some good substitutions there. Mark Sykes actually set up Mimeti for that oh, that goal. Here's Mimeti though. Up against Winks. Down the left-hand side. Looking to break his way through. Curtailed in the end. And Bristol City will get the free kick. It's Hayden Roberts that's taken time. And he gets the free kick. I think they wanted the, the advantage there. Bristol City. Because I think they had the ball. Yeah, they did get the break of the ball. Yeah. But they'll take the free kick. Hayden Roberts might need a bit of treatment. We'll see. As we enter the last 10 minutes at Ashton Gate, Bristol City 1, Leicester City 0. This could be huge in terms of this title race. The race for promotion in the championship this season. Leicester wanted to come here, wanted to win. Wanted three points to take back to Leicester with them. And really put the ball back in Leeds United's court. And say, we raise you. You know, what can you do? But it's not panned, panned out that way at all for Leicester. It's actually gone completely the opposite way. And it's Leeds that will say. The ball is certainly in their court. And in their favour as the cross comes in. And the set piece just to a yard or two ahead of Rob Dickey there as he run in. And the free kick dealt with. But... Bristol City positive again. As Ricardo Pereira. Followed by Naki Wells. And it will be a yellow card. For the Bristol City man. His fifth yellow card of the season. The first of the afternoon. In this game. So Naki Wells in the book. Avedidi with a cross. Whipped in, headed away. Bounces down to Roberts, who can clear his lines, fires it forward. Too far forward, nowhere near any of his teammates. And that one will bounce out for a Leicester throw in on the near side. It's all about digging in now for Bristol City. They have that lead to hold on to. Leicester, it's all about throwing caution to the wind. They've got nothing to lose now. They're one down. They need at least a point out of this. They want anything at this stage. A draw would, in the grand scheme of things, be a disappointment overall. But in the stature of this game in the last couple of minutes to come, a draw, I'm sure Leicester would take over a defeat any day of the week. But because it would just give them that slight edge on Leeds with that game in hand. But of course, remember... They fear they lose today, Leicester. They need to win that game in hand if Leeds win their game this evening. And that's only to keep tabs with Leeds. That's not to take top spot back. Which Leeds do hold on goal difference terms. Pereira. Nice work through the lines. Jewsbury Hall. Can't feed it through. Back to Pereira. Fatawu now. Leicester. Desperate for late drama. Six and a half minutes to go. And that Iheanacho battling around. Could not firm it on. And cleared away by Bristol City. All the way back to Mads Hermanson for Leicester. Who will get them on the front foot again and get them going again. Vestergaard. As Bristol City points again and win the ball back. Only momentarily and now uh, Dewsbury Hall has space now. Finds Mavadidi looking at the cross. 
at the byline, Stevie Mavadidi, and gets the deflection. Will be a corner to Leicester. Corner on the left hand side. Right footed delivery. Whipped in. Headed on by Fatawu. And it's over the bar. Goal kick. Well, as I mentioned before, the last time that Bristol City scored against Leicester in the Championship, they won. That was back in March 2012. The three meetings since, Leicester have kept clean sheets in all three fixtures. 2-0, 4-0 and 1-0. Dating back uh, 12 years. Bristol City actually won back-to-back -back games against Leicester in that 2011-12 season. 2-1 win at the King Pyre and then a 3-2 win here. Leicester, barring their last three, had only won one of their la previous six against Leicester in the Championship. McCrory, chance for Bristol City there. Blocked off. And that's Mavadidi to put it out for the throw in. What a way to give yourself confidence towards the end of this season. A chance to really spark those final games into life. What a difference this could make if they can hold on to grasp a three-pointer against Leicester City. It's not been too uncommon as of recent times. For teams against Leicester. But overall in the season. Seven times. This season Leicester have lost in the championship. This will be their eighth. QPR. Leeds. Middlesbrough. Coventry. Middlesbrough again. Leeds again. Hull City. Could. Bristol City join that cohort of teams to deny Leicester anything out of a game. McCrory, lovely ball across, finds Mometi on the left. Mometi with the delivery. Just a whisker too much to try and find Naki Wells in the box and went behind for a goal kick to Leicester. Uh, Millwall 1, West Brom 0. The second half on the way there. 10 minutes gone in that second half. It is still Millwall with the narrow lead. Fairly even game uh, in that one between Millwall and West Brom. Millwall having the advantage. They lead by goal to nil. With a long way to go in the second half. Fatawu. Now Ricardo Pereira. Played it across. And Mark Sykes. Will get be the next man in the book for his challenge. I think it was on Yannick Vestergaard. So a free kick will go Leicester's way. Third yellow card of the season for Mark Sykes. The Republic of Ireland player. The Irishman. Navadidi. In field. Justin. Bouncing ball. Escaped Navadidi's grasp. And now Bristol City on the break. It's a three on three. Here comes Mimetti. Ball in between the lines. Here's Naki Wells. Can he eke a bit of space? Charge down. Blocked off. Referee said no foul. Flag stayed down. Mimetti on the left. Cannot find the space and fight fast. Puts it out for the throw. Really, really good. And I will see this again. Naki Wells and Harry Winks. Yeah. It's not foul. I mean, it's not a penalty. Winks just leans in, but... It's very firm. I mean, if the referee gave it, you couldn't argue against it, but... I don't think it's much of a foul in that. Naki Wells is trying to buy a, f a penalty nonetheless, but... Harry Winks. Get away with that. Nonetheless, 
It's hail. The hailstones have come down. Not only the rain, but the hail joining it. Could the hail be coming down on Leicester? Could they be under a permanent rain cloud at the moment? This poor spell that they're on. Bristol City doing very well at keeping it in that final third. Just getting throw in after throw in. Holding the ball up as far away from their goal as possible. And with 90 minutes just surpassed, we will have five additional minutes. The board held up by the fourth official showing the number five. Five minutes for Leicester to rescue this. Five minutes for Bristol City to hold on. Free kick here goes Leicester's way, actually. Initially, Andy Kitchen let the game play, but or let the game run, but then pulled it back for a Leicester free kick, which got a bit of confused and bemused faces from Bristol City. As Leicester come forward, Vestergaard, lovely ball through the lines, couldn't be followed up by Dewsbury Hall as Fast tries to step in, but Bristol City. Fire it clear. Anywhere will do at this moment in time. Hermanson. Justin. Back to Mads Hermanson. Four minutes to go now. The clock against Leicester. Fast. As the crowd inside Ashton Gate tries to get Bristol City over the line. Fatawu trying to get Leicester forward. But pushed back and back and forced into a poor pass there. Abdul Fatawu. Free or throw in, sorry, to Bristol City on the halfway line. Really good again from Bristol City. Penn and Leicester back. Not allowing them the opportunity. Certainly not a good Friday for Leicester fans, it seems. Stern looking faces in the away stands here at Ashton Gate. Some three and a half thousand Leicester fans won't be bemused, won't be happy, will not be reveling in a good Friday showdown, but we will see. Is there late drama? Two and a half minutes to go. Time. Sorry. Yeah, two and a half minutes. Thought I counted that wrong. Two and a half minutes to go. And at the moment, Anas Mimeti's goal is the difference. What a goal it is indeed. Leicester struggling to string two or three passes together at the moment. They need to string them together and get them into the final third if they want to rescue this. But here come Bristol City on the break. Chop back across. Big chance. Oh, the ball's cleared away. Fight fast, getting a toe to it to get it away. And now Leicester looking to break. Giving away. Poor from Leicester again. As Bristol City keep it in attack. Roberts down the left. Eeks a bit of space. Does find it along to Mameti. And the ball rolls out of play for a Bristol City throw. Fantastic endeavour from Bristol City there. Fighting every fight. Battling for every ball and every duel. That is a team fighting for the cause. Knowing what they've got in their grasp. They just need to hold on. Throw in, taken, Pring. Gives it away, Fass. Does the exact same, gives it away, and Bristol City go long. As Fatawu picks it up deep in his own half. The flag was going up anyway against the Bristol City player. 
playing uh, against them and maybe just one more opportunity into the last minute it's now or never for Leicester as they come forward and the ball forward is firmly into the hands of Max O'Leary could that be it was that their only opportunity has time gone against them? O'Leary with a kick. Goes long. The five minutes are up. Time is up. Game over. Leicester City are beaten again. For the fourth time in their last six games. Leicester show a blank. And... What a, an absolute incredible performance from Bristol City. Anas Mameti with the crucial goal. And that could be huge in the championship title race. Leeds United remain top of the, uh, of the summit. At the top of the table. Top of the pile on goal difference. And they still have to play. They're level on 38 games Leeds and Leicester. And Leeds are leading the way. Leicester, part of the chasing pack. But only by goal difference. Leeds want to take a three-point lead in the title race. They have that chance at Vicarage Road later this evening. Leicester had their chance to head back top of the table this afternoon. And them to take a three-point lead before Leeds could play. But Bristol City stood in their way and denied them anything. At Ashton Gates. They join a small cohort of teams. That have denied Leicester anything from games this season. Leicester their 8th defeat of the campaign. But Bristol City. What a job. What a moment. What a game. What a performance. Final score on this first of our two double headers on Good Friday. In this race for promotion. Bristol City have done the improbable. Certainly not the impossible. And they have made it possible. Bristol City 1. Leicester City 0. Anas Mometi with the goal. A very good Friday for Bristol City. And you can join us later this evening. When we have another of the... Race for promotion games as Watford host Leeds United tonight, 8 o'clock on LFS. The championship title race rings on and it's Leeds' turn to respond. Leicester couldn't do it. Leeds have a chance to take a lead at the top to three points. Can they do it later this evening? They host Watford. Plus a roundup of all the day's action from the championship as well. From all 11 other games from the championship. Do join us 8 o'clock this evening. But for now, have a very good Friday. And we'll see you later this evening around about 8 o'clock. Good night. Catch me if I fall.